Welcome to Easy Khan Academy YouTube channel. If you are coming across my lecture for the first time, please don't forget to like the video. Also share it with others. Subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss my upcoming videos. If you are a returning subscriber, I say thank you and God bless you. In today's lecture, I will be examining higher purchase. Higher purchase. Higher purchase is a transaction in which the seller transfers the possession of an asset to the buyer who in, re who in return pay instrumentally to the seller the agreed higher purchase price. I repeat, higher purchase is a transaction in which the seller transfers the possession of an asset to the buyer who in return pay instrumentally to the seller the agreed higher purchase price. So we want to look at the terminologies used in the in, in connection with higher purchase definition of terms. Number one term I'm going to examine is the higher purchase price. Higher purchase price. Higher purchase price is the sum of the deposit and an installment payable by the higher purchaser or cash price plus higher purchase interest. I've told you the higher purchase price. I said it is the sum of the deposit plus the installment. Sum of the deposit and installment payable to the higher purchase seller. That is the higher purchase price. Sum of the deposit and installment payable to the higher purchase seller. It is the higher purchase buyer that will pay this sum to the seller. The deposit. This deposit will be made outrightly at the extension of the higher purchase transactions. And the instrumental payment will be made by the buyer to liquidate the agreed higher purchase price. Number two. I've told you that higher purchase price, I said it is the sum of deposit and uh, installment. Or alternatively, higher purchase price. It is the sum of cash price, cash price plus uh, higher purchase interest. When you add the cash price and higher purchase interest or finance charge, total finance charge, let me see, total higher purchase interest or total finance charge, when you add it to the cash price, then you get the higher purchase price. These are the two ways through which the higher purchase price may be calculated. These are the two ways in which the higher purchase price may be calculated. One way is by adding the deposit and installment. Another way is to add the cash price and the higher purchase interest. So these are the two ways through or in which the higher purchase price may be calculated. So what do we mean by the cash price? Number two term I'm going to examine is the cash price. Cash price. Cash price is the, uh, is the normal selling price of the item. The normal selling price of the item. If you are to pay outrightly, you are to pay all the value outrightly at the extension of that transaction. If you are to pay immediately, the amount you are going to pay in cash, that is what we mean by cash price. It is the normal selling price of the item. That is the cash price. Number three term I'm going to examine is finance charge. Finance charge. Another word for finance charge is higher purchase interest. Finance charge or higher purchase interest is the excess of the higher purchase price over the cash price. Excess of the higher purchase price over the cash price. Meaning that to determine the total finance charge, you will need to determine the higher purchase price. And I've told you that to determine the higher purchase price, you add the deposit and the installment. Deposit plus installment. I've told you that will give you the higher purchase price. Or you add the cash price plus finance charge. But to determine the finance charge now, you need to determine the higher purchase price. Higher purchase price. Finance charge equal to higher purchase price. Less cash price. Less cash price. I'll explain what this means. I will explain cash price. So when you deduct the cash price from the higher purchase price, then you get the higher 
higher purchase interest. Higher purchase interest. Have to do that. Another one for higher purchase interest is finance charge. That is finance charge. Number four. Number four. We are going to look at the deposit. What do you mean by deposit? Deposit. That is the fourth term I'm going to examine. Deposit is the initial sum payable by the higher purchase buyer at the inception of the higher purchase transaction. The initial sum payable by the higher purchaser at the inception of the higher purchase transaction is said to be the deposit. So, meaning that the moment the asset is acquired, certain amount will be paid by the buyer to the seller. That amount it will not be the actual higher purchase price. Certain portion, maybe if the higher purchase price, if it is $1 million, so the buyer may pay $50,000 outrightly. So, the $50,000 paid outrightly is said to be the deposit. Then that means, out of the $1 million, you are still left with $950,000. $950,000 to be paid. So, that is deposit. The number fifth term I'm going to examine, number five. Number five, we have uh, installment. Number five, we have installment. Installment. What do we buy? Installment. This is the amount. Installment is the amount payable by the higher purchase buyer. Amount payable by the higher purchase buyer at a specified interval to liquidate the balance of the higher purchase price. The amount payable by the higher purchase buyer at a specific interval, a specified interval to liquidate the balance of the higher purchase price. That is the installment. You know, uh, out of the one million dollar, which was the higher purchase price based on my earlier illustration, fifty thousand dollar have been paid. Then you are left with the nine fifty thousand dollar. The nine fifty thousand dollar, you will be asked to spread that over maybe a period of 10 months. If it is to be spread over 10 months period, then that means you'll be having $950,000 divided by 10, giving you $95,000. That means the higher purchaser, that is the buyer, will now be paying $95,000 every month over 10 months period. No 10 months period, $95,000 per month times 10, that will be $950,000 plus $50,000 which have been paid Australia at the exception as a deposit, then that will amount to one million dollar. So that is the installment. Installment. Then I'm going to consider the methods of spreading the higher purchase interest over the higher purchase period. There are three methods of spreading higher purchase interest. Three methods of spreading higher purchase interest over the higher purchase period. Number one method is straight line method straight line method or equal installment method straight line straight line method another one for straight line method is equal installment equal installment method straight line method or equal installment method Number two method is the sum of the digits method. Sum of the digits method. Sum of the yes digit method. Sum of the digits method. Number three is a trail method. A two area method. These are the three methods of these are the three methods of spreading. The higher purchase interest. I've told you that the first method is the straight line method. This is the simplest of all the three methods. It is the easiest to use. Straight line method or equal installment method. Straight line method. Under this method, higher purchase interest is spread equally over the higher period. You spread it equally. If the total higher purchase interest, if it is $100,000, if you want to spread it equally over the higher period, suppose the higher period is 10 months or 10 years, so you just divide the total finance charge by 10, then that means the finance charge included in the initial installment now will be $10,000. That is straight.
straight line method or equal installment method. I've told you that you are going to spread it equally over the higher period. You first of all determine the total finance charge. I've given you the formula for calculating the finance charge earlier. That is, you must have calculated the higher purchase price, higher purchase price, then you less the cash price from higher purchase price, then you get the higher purchase interest or the finance charge. The finance charge you don't get now from this model or this formula, you don't divide it by the number of installments. If the number of installments is five, then you divide it by five. And if the number of installments is 20 installments, you divide it by 20. That will give you the higher purchase interest included in each of the installments. Higher purchase interest per installment. That is under the straight line method. Calculate the finance charge or higher purchase interest included in each of the installments. Included in each installment under the straight line method so you have total finance charge total finance total finance charge or total higher purchase interest over n we are n equal to number of installments we are n equals to number of installments so that is the formula for calculating the higher purchase interest to be included in each of the installments now the second method is the sum of the sum of digits sum of digits method sum of digits method under this method the higher purchase interest is written off over the higher period in a reducing manner based on the digits. The higher purchase interest is written off over the higher period, at least over the higher purchase period, in a reducing manner based on the digits. So now you are going to let us assume the higher purchase period is five years. You are going to have, you reverse the digits. You start with year five, year four, year three, year two, and year one. You now use it to apportion the higher purchase interest. So under this method, by the time I take a work example, you'll be able to get that better. Example, cash price, 20,000 Naira. Initial deposit, 10,000 Naira. Four yearly installments of 7,500 Naira each, payable on 31st December each year. The company makes up account at 31st December. Calculate the higher purchase interest attributable to each year using one straight line method to sum of digits method. Now, let's have the solution. Solution. The first step is to calculate the how the finance charge. Step one, you calculate calculate the total higher purchase interest. That is the first step. You calculate the total finance charge. I've told you that to calculate the higher purchase interest or finance charge, you have the you first of all calculate the higher purchase price. You have been given to calculate the higher purchase price. So actually, the higher purchase price comprises the deposit. You are given deposit of ten thousand naira. Deposit of ten thousand naira. Then we have installments. Installments. Of 7,500 naira per annum. Four yearly installments of 7,500 naira each. So we have four years times 7,500 naira each. 
that will give us 30,000 naira. That amounted to 30,000 naira. So if you add the deposit and installments, remember I've told you that to, when you add deposit and installment, we are going to get the higher purchase price. Higher purchase price is 40,000 naira. Now that you have gotten the higher purchase price, and what we need is the higher purchase interest. I've told you that to calculate the higher purchase interest, your higher purchase interest is the higher purchase price less cash price. So you are going to subtract the cash price from the higher purchase price. And how much is the cash price? We are given the cash price of 20,000 naira. The cash price amounted to 20,000 naira. By the time you subtract the cash price of 20,000 naira from the higher purchase price of 40,000 naira, you'll be left with the total finance charge. Total finance charge or total higher purchase interest. Higher purchase interest. I've told you that another word for higher purchase interest is finance charge. And that amounted to 12,000 naira. So, this is the higher purchase interest included in all the installments. Now that you have gotten that, what you need is to calculate the higher purchase interest attributable to each year. The one attributable to each year. That is what you need. And the 12,000 you have got here is the total higher purchase interest included in all the installments. And you have four years installment. Four years. Therefore, higher purchase interest included in each year installment. I'll tell you that to get this, you divide the total higher purchase interest or total finance charge of 12,000 by the number of installments. And the number of installments is 4. So if you have 12,000 divided by 4, that will give us 3,000 naira. That is straight line method. Then the second method is the sum of the digits. Method 2. Sum of digits method. So, sum of digits method, you are still going to calculate the higher purchase, total higher purchase interest of 4,000 you have gotten here. So, since that has been calculated, you don't need to repeat that step again. The 12,000, you will have gotten this. So, we have 12,000. So, now have apportionment or allocation of higher purchase interest to each year and we have four years involved one two three four then you now reverse the digit you reverse the digit since four years are involved then you start with year four year three year two and year one now sum of the years did it. 4 plus 3, that is 7. Plus 2, that is 9. Plus 1, 10. The total sum of the digits is 10. Then you now use this to apportion the half purchase interest of 12,000 naira you have got in here. The 12,000 naira half purchase interest you've got in here, you apportion it using the sum of the years digit. So now higher purchase interest now. So for the first year now, you have 4. As the digit out of the total digits is 10. 4 over 10 times the half purchase interest calculated is 12,000 naira. So we have 12,000 times uh, 4 divided by 10. That gives us 4,800. For the first year, you have 4,800. For year 2, we have 3 over 10 times 12,000 naira. That gives us. Then you have 3,600 naira. For year 3, you have 2 over 10 times 12,000 naira. So, that gives us 2,400 naira. Then the now year 4, we have 1 over 10 times 12,000 naira. That gives us 1,000. 
1,200 naira. So if you add up the interest, 4,800 plus 3,600 plus 2,400 plus 1,200, that is total 12,000 naira. That is some of the DG's method. That is the end of the solution to that question. This is the end of the part one. In my next presentation, I will examine the accounting for higher purchase transactions using the higher purchase interest account method and higher purchase interest suspense accounting method. Work example will be provided. The detailed accounting entries or procedures will equally be provided. Please don't forget to like the video. Also share it with other. Subscribe to the channel if you have not subscribed in the past. Thanks for watching this account. Got it.